One of the top stories in the UK right now is the tragic disappearance and likely murder of a 33-year-old woman called Sarah Everard. Everard went missing last week after she left her friend's house in Clapham, London after 9pm on her way home to Brixton. Now it goes without saying that this is a terrible occurrence and the person responsible should be brought to justice and locked up forever. But the response to this on social media once again highlights the complete disconnect between how people perceive the world to be and how it really is. The dominant narrative being pushed by the loudest voices is that the burden of blame for Everard's disappearance lies not necessarily just with the perpetrator, but with all men in general. A Green Party politician even got up in front of the House of Lords and claimed that all men should be put under a 6pm curfew. I would argue that at the next opportunity for any bill that's appropriate, I might actually put in an amendment to create a curfew for men on the streets after 6pm, which I feel would make women a lot safer and discrimination of all kinds would be lessened. The hashtag not all men also began trending before it was soon dominated by Me Too advocates and male feminists, many of whom have hijacked the tragedy to create yet more division between the sexes. If your response to the Sarah Everard case is to say not all men, then you're part of the problem. Do we really have to raise our daughters to be careful to walk home at night because they might get murdered? This is a man problem. We need to own it, challenge it, and change it. No, it's not a man problem. It's a murderer problem. It's a violent crime problem. It's a policing problem. And it's a self-defense problem. Do you really think would-be murderers are going to be prevented from murdering if you just tell them not to murder? Murder is wrong. Don't do it. Oh, okay then. Should we tell our daughters not to walk alone late at night through dangerous areas of London where sexual assaults, acid attacks, stabbings and murders are becoming commonplace? Yes! That's not victim blaming. That's not misogyny. That's pure common sense. There are no safe spaces in the real world. The real world is a dangerous place. We have an entire generation of people who have been re-educated to think that the biggest threat they'll face in life is mean words on the internet. That's why they're so shocked when reality jolts them with a sobering reminder of the actual threats. And thanks to the lockdown policies that many of these people overwhelmingly support, while people are being stabbed to death in Croydon, while women are being abducted off the streets in Clapham, where are the police? Breaking up house parties, handing out fines to people for sitting on benches. Meanwhile, while knife crime surges to all-time highs, Women aren't even legally allowed in the UK to carry pepper spray. The blue check marks will grandstand until they're blue in the face about how much concern they have for defenseless women. But when you suggest allowing women to be armed to fend off dangerous attackers, oh no, we can't have that. A woman in the UK caught carrying pepper spray will face the same legal penalty as carrying a gun. That's utter nonsense. If you really want to protect women, Stop criminalizing self-defense. This will reduce the risk of attacks from day one to an infinitely greater degree than moral panics, vigils, or hashtags that blame an entire gender, but they're never gonna do it. It's a fact that women in the UK are stalked, harassed, followed home, and in the worst cases, abducted and killed. But it's also a fact that the law offers them no sufficient legal means of protecting themselves. So the law needs to change. Violent criminals aren't going to be deterred by social media outrage. Many of them will be deterred by a blast of caustic chemicals to the face. The horrific irony here is that many of these people whose knee-jerk reaction to these kind of tragedies is to blame toxic masculinity will vote for the same parties who enact the same policies that put women at greater risk. After over a thousand women were molested and raped in Cologne on New Year's Eve 2015, almost entirely by North African migrants, how did feminists react? Did they go nuclear on social media? Did they demand curfews? Did they demand border controls, better integration? No. They went to the local migrant centre and handed out flowers. 1,400 young girls in Rotherham alone were kidnapped and abused by sex traffickers over a period of 16 years. Where were the vigils? Where were the campaigns? Where was the outrage? 
In comparison, it was virtually non-existent. Acid attacks, honor killings, forced prostitution, human trafficking, rape gangs. Suddenly there's outrage. London itself has become significantly more violent because of the open border policies that have worsened gang violence and emboldened violent criminals. I've made numerous videos about countless cases of young women who travel alone to dangerous areas of the world. And because they've been indoctrinated by society and the media to believe in cultural relativism, they think it's no different visiting tourist hotspots in Venice to visiting mountainous regions of Morocco. It's very different and the risks are far greater because all cultures are not equal and all cultures don't have the same view towards women. Which is why there have been innumerable high profile cases of women who make those dangerous trips alone and never come home. You're not gonna stop murderers by getting hashtags trending, holding vigils, or telling murderers not to murder. That utopia you created in your head doesn't exist in the real world. You can't stop evil with retweets. You can reduce the risk with better use of police resources and decriminalizing self-defense. Women should be able to visit any area of the world without being stalked, harassed, or abducted. It's not their fault that they can't do that. But still, we have to be realistic. We don't live in that utopia. It never existed, and it never will. And no amount of hand-wringing over misogyny or contrived moral panics over toxic masculinity is ever gonna change that. <laughs>